today's news, Klein Han delivers letter to governor. Royal Virgin Islands police forced to increase officers and daily foot patrols. Boy makes request to court. Vantapool named Virgin Garda Festival honoree and British Navy assists in drug bus off St. Croix. A viewers, these are more stories on 2 4 News Return. or visit a CCT store to find out more and bring it home. More locations coming soon. One. Uh, yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got here. My name is Kamal Haynes. Most of you know me from 284 News, but now you get to see me in a different light on my very own show called Health is Well. We have Joel Turbo. I don't want you to arch your back when you're pulling down. Milton McLean. First of all, right, your footwork. Steve Augustine. He did a pretty hard workout today, so perhaps. And as you can see, it's actually. <laughs> Alonzo Boynes. Taekwondo. Adam Morrows. I'll speak as if you're an absolute beginner. I uh, am an absolute beginner. You are an absolute beginner. And Seth Graham. It bites. It will bite. <laughs> get your water, get your fruits and veggies and experience a wealth of knowledge about getting healthy. Welcome viewers to the Wednesday, February 14th, Valentine's edition of 284 News. I am Kamal Haynes, bringing you the latest out of the British Virgin Islands. Leading today's news, 284 Media joined concerned members of the public who marched in Road Town today to bring attention to calls for better security in the BVI. Jack Wooden has the details. We are coming to you from the governor's office where, of course, moments ago, Mr. Ron Ford Klein would have hand-delivered a letter calling for better security and calling for the details of the governor and the police commissioner's plan to address the security needs of the BVI. We, of course, joined the lovely people standing behind me this morning for a march through the city of Roadtown, particularly the waterfront. Here is how that went. We can't afford a next robbery, a third robbery happening again. And we want to say to we want to say to criminal minded youth, y'all need to stop. Lay down your arms. There is a better way. Your way is not the BVI way. We want to say to parents who have children and you see they have ammunition in your house, you need to turn them into the police. You need to take responsibility for the activity that's going in and around your house. This is not just a police problem, it's a community problem, it's a parental problem, and we need to get a hold of this. We cannot afford to raise any further criminal-minded generations. We need our young men to know that they can earn an honest living and they don't have to resort to crime to get money. The love of money is a root of all evil. And we cannot afford that because I'm sure a lot of them have children themselves. What are you teaching your children if you're going to engage in this type of behavior? What kind of BBI will you leave for your children? Can you imagine the fear of business owners in Road Town? We had one at the Pear Park. They don't feel safe anymore. So we need police presence at the Pear Park. We need police presence on Main Street. We need police presence on Fleming Street. We need police presence everywhere there are businesses. In Virgin Gorda, in Anagata, no matter where. 
And we need police presence. And we're talking about foot patrol. And you see my sign says, this is one that says you need to arm the police. But the one with funding the police, what better way to get money into the kitty with police on the streets, which can give tickets to bad parking, illegal parking, parking for people where they block it, especially where that incident happened. That's one of the worst areas where people park in the middle of active traffic. That should be a $200 fine. The police can have a conversation with these young men and, and educate them to what life is like behind bars and any activity only leads to a life that is not fruitful. I believe the police don't just need to walk around, but they also need to get involved with the young people um, so that they win the confidence of the police so that if they see something, they feel free and confident confident enough to say something. The response was the response was good. I get a lot of calls say they, they support me what I'm doing, but they can't make it because of a time. Um, a lot of people signed the petition because we only had it out one day. We did send one over to Virgin Gorda. We didn't get that back, but we had one for also for Justin Dykes. But like I said, I'm going to be creating that that petition online so everybody can just go to change.org and they will look for it. Will the, the topic will be um, better security for the BVI. That will be the main topic. Like I said, the petition is there not as a protest for it, but to help them to build and know that we are serious about we, we need better protection in the BVI. Oh, and of course, today is Valentine's Day. Would you say this is your way of showing love? To yes, you, right? showing my love. I, I, I don't know if you know my Jeep, but I normally fly around with my my BVI flags, and I wanted to have one waving, but the time run through. But yes, this is a way of showing love to our country, and, and if you if you're a BVL or not, if you, even if you reside here, you have to you have to show some kind of love to where you live, you know. So, and that's why I want to get across to the people. You know, a lot of people who's not from here, they're kind of scared to come out because they feel this might happen to them or somebody might report them to them. But I tell them this is not a, this is not a protest. This is this is for our livelihood. This is to help help deter someone from being shut down in the middle of our streets. All, all the talk means nothing if we don't actually show up. That's that's the long and short of the story. We can say what we want, we can post what we want, but if we actually showing up, um, then it don't matter. And change is not convenient. The sun is going to be up, you're going to have to walk, you're going to have to stand, you're going to have to sweat. Change is not convenient. And if we actually want to do something different, we have to do it. Yeah? And that's, that's the long and short of it right there. The Royal Virgin Islands Police Force will be taking additional measures to enhance the security of the territory following recent alarming incidents involving crime. The strategy was discussed at a National Security Council meeting held on Monday. Among the initiatives resulting from the meeting include a proposal to increase the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force by 30 police officers over the next three to four months to strengthen law enforcement capabilities and improve the overall security landscape in the BVI. The National Security Council also endorsed the introduction of daily foot patrols by police officers in the road town area to increase visibility and proactive engagement within the heavily frequented business community. The National Security Council also acknowledged the importance of securing the territory's ports and noted the upcoming training sessions for police officers in this crucial area. Additionally, the Council emphasized the significance of cross-community and cross-government collaboration as the key to addressing the underlying factors that contribute to crime activities. This development follows the brazen daylight armed robbery at a local store in Roadtown last Friday and a recent shooting at Cane Garden Bay that have left residents concerned about the state of crime in the BVI. Former Premier Andrew Foy has requested the court to exercise his, his discretion and repoll jurors B and C regarding their recently published guilty verdicts following his trial. The 12-member jury found Foy guilty of four counts on Thursday relating to conspiracy to import a mixture and a substance containing a, a detectable amount of cocaine into the United States, conspiracy to commit money laundering, attempted money laundering, and interstate travel in aid of racketeering. 
court documents seen by Tuit 4 Media revealed that immediately after the jury returned into the jury room, Foy's attorney raised concerns about Juror B's expressions of concern. Counsel noted that the juror had looked at both defense counsel and engaged in eye contact during or after polling, indicating an ease with some part of the process. The document further stated that the court, initially taking no immediate action, reconvened the parties after being advised by its staff that Juror B and Juror C had approached them, asserting that the published uh, verdicts were not their actual decisions. The subsequent discussion between the court and counsel resolved, uh, we're sorry, revolved around how to address their revelations and what statements should be made to jurors B and C. The court brought the two jurors back into the courtroom, reforming or informing them of a future investigation or inquiry related to the information they provided to the court's staff before discharging them once again. The prosecution then suggested resuming jury deliberations, but this was met with objection from the defense and ultimately rejected by the court due to the discharge of the jury. As a result, Foy's legal team made several requests at the court status conference on Monday, February 12, 2024. Foy's defense is proposing individual and stage inquiries asking jurors B and C if the published verdicts align with their actual decisions. The defense also recommends republishing uh, the verdicts before posing the question. It was further noted that if either juror answers negatively, the court should then repoll for each count to identify where unanimity is lacking. Uh, conversely, if both jurors affirm the published uh, verdicts, the matter should not be probed further unless additional grounds arise. Our viewers will continue to update you as this story continues to develop. Well, up next, viewers, we bring to you some more local news. One Stop Auto, located in the r, &R Malone Complex, Parkwood Pond, is having a huge liquidation sale on all inventory, excluding vehicles and genuine Toyota and Lexus parts. Get no less than 50% off all items on shelves and inventory room. Items such as car covers, steering wheel covers, wipers, sealants, chemicals, emergency cones, adhesives, license plates, frames, air filters, oil filters, front brakes, rear brakes, front rotors, rear rotors, radiators, shocks, and much, much more. More. A specific listing of all makes and models for which parts are available at liquidation prices will be posted on our Facebook page. Start the year off with more. More speed, more downloading, more savings, and more FIA. CCT FIA Fiber Internet gives you the speed you need to keep the whole family connected. Packages starting at $119 with speeds from 300 megabytes per second, super fast, unlimited downloads, even more reliable connectivity, plus free live streaming TV for the family to enjoy. Sign up for the absolute best fiber internet service in the BVI, CCT FIA, and pay no installation fee. Plus, get CCT Live TV for free. You deserve more. Get more with CCT. Life Unlimited. Welcome back, viewers. The upcoming 57th Virgin Garda Easter Festival, a cherished 57-year tradition, will pay a tribute to the prominent Virgin Garda businessman, Rupert Buck Vanderpool. Mr. Vanderpool has been named the honoree of the festival, recognizing his enduring commitment and substantial contributions to the event over the years. The Virgin Garda Easter Festival Committee annually designates an honoree who has played a pivotal role in the success of the festival. In a statement, the committee commended Mr. Vantapool stating, and I quote, Rupert's commitment to the community extends far beyond the, the aisles of his supermarket. He and his company have been steadfast supporters of the Virgin Garden Easter Festival, generously sponsoring village events, pageants, and festival troops, ensuring that the cherished tradition continues to flourish and enrich the lives of all who partake in the festivities, end quote. Mr. Vanderpool's journey from a small superette at the Virgin Garda Yacht Harbour to expanding at the same venue and establishing a supermarket on Tower Road in Valley, Virgin Garda, has been highlighted as a testament to his entrepreneurial success and dedication to the community. Director of Tourism Clive McCoy praised the festival committee for their hard work and collaboration. While the Virgin Garda Easter Festival is set to be celebrated through March, 
commencing with the Miss Teen Virgin Garda Easter Festival pageant on Saturday, March 2nd, 2024. The festivities will include pageants, festival village entertainment, the culture food fair, the annual hat parade, Easter egg hunt, and will culminate with the Easter Monday parade on 1st April, 2024. But Elmer's South High School on Thursday, February 8th, hosted its annual college fair featuring local, regional, and international universities. Ron Grant was on the ground and filed this report. So this morning we have about 12 colleges at our institution um, just sharing information for students who are applying to colleges in the United States. It's actually a historically black universe, college and university tour that is put on every year by the coordinator, Tyler Warner of St. Croix. Um, this is actually our second year hosting the college fair. Um, previously, because of Alma, we were not able to um, host it, but again, we did it last year. Um, it was a success. Actually, this year now we have more students um, from throughout the territory, um, students from Virgin Garda, Brigado Flax, Sibony, we have Seven Day Adventist, we have St. George's, Virgin Island School of Technical Studies, as well of the host, most out high school so roughly I would say there are about between four to six hundred students here on our campus right now it is very important um, for our students in the territory why last year we had colleges come here and about 20 Elmo Stout High School students were awarded full scholarship. Right now, there are two students who left, who graduated last year um, at Virginia State who are currently now enrolled at the college via them being here last year and was able to award those two students scholarship so they're attending Virginia State. I'm the coordinator of the Virgin Islands College College Fair. This year, College Fair 2024, we're here in Tortola expressing and sharing all the information that we can with the students of Tortola. I've been doing the College Fair since the mid 80s. We've been doing this for over 35 years. We had a little lull due to Hurricane Irma and Maria, so we were able to come. But last year, we'll be back on track and we continue to move forward with scholarships, information, and sharing knowledge with our young people. Today, we have seniors and juniors here from the various schools here in Tortola with our sharing their information and hopefully when we leave we'll be able to share information about the number of scholarships that have been received and those of our young people that will be going abroad to the colleges and universities in the United States. The schools we have today are Johnson C. Smith, Morgan State, well Johnson C. Smith out of North Carolina, Morgan State out of Baltimore, North Carolina Central University out of North Carolina, we have Virginia State University out of Virginia. We have uh, Coppin State out of Baltimore, Maryland. We have uh, Life University out of South Carolina. We have Houston Tillotson University out of Austin, Texas. Uh, Morgan State, let me see. So we have approximately about 11, 12 schools here. My name is Jahi Chapman. I'm representing Coppin State University located in Baltimore, Maryland, um, in the east coast of the states. I'm here as an admissions counselor. I'm also here representing my alma mater. I graduated this past May, fall, um, spring 23, uh, yeah. So what I want the students to take away from this experience is, you know, to get exposed to HBCUs, historically black colleges and universities. Um, you know, what I love to tell a lot of students, you know, students of color, you know, go where somewhere you're celebrated and not tolerated. And I also want students to be exposed to, you know, the great opportunities such as like my, my university. Um, we actually want our most affordable schools in the state, in the state of Maryland and also in the United States. Well, viewers, up next, we get to some news from across the region. Orange alert. Orange alert. Fire is spreading across the BVI. The fastest, most reliable, and affordable fiber internet service is here for you. Look out for 
fire in these new locations. Slaney, Duff Bottom, Manual Reef, Seacouse Bay, Albion, Hannah's, Palestina, Pleasant Valley, and Havers. Fiber is in your area. Call 444-4444 or visit a CCT store to find out more and bring it home. More locations coming soon. Some claim that the age of a true gentleman is far behind us, but here at 284 Media, we disagree. He may appear in different guises today, but the values and ideals that make him a gent still stand. 284 Media proudly presents The Art of a Distinguished Gentleman with yours truly, Ron Grant, a show poised to help guide modern day men into 21st century distinguished gentlemen. Don't worry, it's not all about suits and bow ties, but raw, real life lessons that translate to grounded, community minded, well rounded men. The Art of a Distinguished Gentleman, Season 5. A 284 Media Production. Welcome back, viewers. In a joint operation involving the British Royal Navy, Customs and Border Protection, and federal law enforcement agencies, a significant drug bust unfolded on Monday, resulted in the arrest of four Venezuelan nationals off the southwest coast of St. Croix. The individuals identified as Daniel Marvel Navarro, or Diesel Carreno Carreno, Felix Jose Bermudez, and Luis Lugo Marvel now face federal cocaine trafficking charges. According to reports by the Virgin Islands Consortium News Agency, the men were apprehended in the Long Point area after the vessel was intercepted during a dramatic pursuit aided by the British Royal Navy. Reports indicate that the operation began on Sunday night when the CBP agents conducting aerial surveillance spotted the vessel approximately 67 nautical miles south of St. Croix, heading northwest at a speed of about 15 knots. With the vessel attempting to evade capture, the CBP sought assistance from a British Royal Navy ship located approximately 12 miles away. The British Royal Navy swiftly responded by launching two small boats to intercept the suspicious vessel. A high-speed chase ensued, with the target vessel accelerating towards the Long Point Beach. But during the pursuit, those on board began discarding their cargo, tossing approximately 29 bales of contraband overboard. Despite the attempts to escape, CBP's aerial surveillance maintained close taps on the vessel's movements. By 3 a.m. on Monday, the target vessel had reached Long Point, and CBP observed four individuals jumping off the boat and fleeing towards a field next to a housing complex. With aerial surveillance uh, still tracking the suspects, the Virgin Islands Police Department along with special agents from Homeland Security Investigations and the Drug Enforcement Agency uh, Ad Administration sorry, successfully coordinated their efforts. Approximately an hour after making landfall, the four men were apprehended, still in clothing that was dripping wet. Following the arrest of the individuals, law enforcement officials took custody of the vessel discovering a significant cache of contraband still aboard. Testing confirmed that the seized narcotics totaled 2,169.5 kilograms, marking a major victory against drug trafficking in the region. Federal officials commended the collaboration between the agencies and highlighted the crucial role played by the Virgin Islands Police Department in executing the complex and dangerous operation successfully. Well, a plume of Saharan dust is projected to impact the Virgin Islands this week, posing potential health risk to residents. The Department of Disaster Management had issued an advisory for the public to take necessary precautions as the dust is expected to arrive as early as the afternoon of today, Wednesday, February 14th. Residents were urged to be aware of the potential health effects and follow recommended guidelines to minimize exposure. The Saharan dust carries a range of health risks including dry cough, sore throat, itchy watery eyes, sneezing, and a runny nose. Those most susceptible to adverse effects include the elderly, children, and individuals with respiratory illnesses such as asthma and people with chronic heart disease. The DDM emphasizes the importance of taking proactive measures to reduce exposure and safeguard one's health. 
Recommendations from the Department of Disaster Management include keep windows and doors closed, wear a dusk mask when necessary, drink plenty of water and fluids, and keep relevant medications close by. Well, viewers, that's all we have for today's news roundup. Be sure to follow us for daily news updates at 284media.com and like us on Facebook at 284media and 284bvi on Instagram and Twitter. I'm Kamal Haynes. I'll see you again tomorrow. Have a safe and enjoyable evening. Bye-bye. Just over the seas, there's a very authentic and natural dining experience that you can't afford to miss. Yost Lime and Dine is for the lime and dining enthusiasts. As the island of Yost Van Dyke opens its shores for extra hours of fun for four nights in January and eight nights in February. Ferries leave West End at 6 p.m. on selected days and return at 10.45 p.m., giving you ample time to bar hop or drop by your favorite restaurants to enjoy the catch of the day or whatever your heart desires from the bounty of menus presented you pay twenty dollars to go and we cover the cost of your return come knowing that an unmatched experience awaits you every saturday in january and every wednesday and saturday in february and valentine's day falls on a wednesday so make plans now to join us for valentine's night on yost van dyke come for the lime or come for the dine as we lime it and we dine in on yost van dyke all January and February 2024. Check the BBI Food Fed page on Facebook for more details. To make a reservation, call 442-1700 Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 445 p.m. Or email Dine at bvitourism.com anytime. or visit a CCT store to find out more and bring it home. More locations coming soon. Father Jesus, that learn your long like church souls. Hmm. Alright, let me enjoy the rest of it. Next customer in line, please. Wait, hold on a second. Yes, Sonny Boy, come, yes, Sonny Boy. Good morning, Sonny Boy. You must have cut fun tapping. It's okay, it's okay, I'll take care of you. What? No, no man, take care of me. How may I assist you? Yes, yes. <laughs> you want a top of power? Eh? You want a top of power? Eh? You want a top of power? Huh? Join the prepaid party with CCT and enjoy more affordable data plans, more top up promotions, more savings with hero bundles, and more value for your money each and every Tuesday with Top Up Turn Up Tuesday. Visit a CCT store today or anywhere CCT Top Up is sold and top up your phone. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. You want top of power? Eh? Start the year off with more. More speed, more downloading, more savings, and more FIA. CCT FIA Fiber Internet gives you the speed you need to keep the whole family connected. Packages starting at $119 with speeds from 300 megabytes per second. Super fast, unlimited downloads, even more reliable connectivity, plus free live streaming TV for the family to enjoy. Sign up for the absolute best fiber internet service in the BVI, CCT FIA, and pay no installation fee. Plus, get CCT Live TV for free. You deserve more. Get more with CCT. Life Unlimited. One. Uh, yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got here. My name is Kamal Haynes. Most of you know me from 284 News, but now you get to see me in a different light on my very own show called Health is Well. We have Joel Turnbull. I don't want you to arch your back when you're pulling down. Milton McLean. 
First of all, right, your, your footwork. Steve Augustine. He did a pretty hard workout today, so perhaps... And as you can see, it's actually... <laughs> Alonzo Boynes. Taekwondo. Adam Morrows. I'll speak as if you're an absolute beginner. I am an absolute beginner. You are an absolute beginner. And Seth Bream. It bites. It will Everything bite. <laughs> get your water, get your fruits and veggies and experience a wealth of knowledge about getting healthy.